Uh, we are here to learn about how to fire muzzle-loaded weapons. This right here is not a replica, but it's a wall hanging of a French Charleville musket. Flint lock. It would have had a piece of flint here, a pan, it would have shook a little bit of gunpowder on it, and when this came forward, when you pulled the trigger, it would strike the pan, make sparks, which would ignite the little gunpowder. It would go down a small vent hole. It would ignite the charge in the barrel and fire the projectile. This would fire something that was about 30 caliber, which is about the size of a small marble. And it would shoot, um, I don't know, up to about 100 yards. But it was only accurate up to about 50 yards, which is not that far. Okay, this would have been used in the Revolutionary War. And what war are we studying? Civil War. Civil War, right? And so in the Civil War, they were still using weapons that were made during the Revolutionary War 87 years earlier, including the cannon. Okay? There's not much difference from a small caliber weapon like that and a full scale cannon. They're loaded and they're fired. The safety issues are the same. It's just a difference in size. In fact, you could go, if you went to uh, Alabama in Mobile Bay, they have a battleship called the USS Alabama Battleship that you can go and tour. It's a floating museum now. They have 16-inch guns on this World War II battleship. And they still load gunpowder bags in it, and they swab it and all that, just like we would one of these. So pay attention, I will go and demonstrate each one of the different jobs that is done. So pay attention if you know what your job is so that you can do exactly how it's shown. Okay, if you mess up, we'll help you along the way. Ken is going to be our gun commander for this. He will call these different commands and I will follow them. You will notice I will be just like a dummy parrot. He's going to say, call a, a command. Down the vent. Down the vent. Call it again. Down the vent. Down the vent. I'm repeating what he says. So if you don't know what you're doing, he's going to tell you what to do. <laughs> then you just tell him right back what you're doing. That way, when you're up here, you're telling everybody what you're doing. It keeps it safe. So everybody knows what everybody else is doing all the time. OK? So our first position would be called the vent safety. The vent in the back, little straw hole going down into the barrel, about the size of a straw. When they would fire this over and over again, it would plug up with black gunpowder residue. So they took a vent punch, and they would force it down, punch all the gunk down into the barrel, take it out. Now it's open. The fire can get to the charge to fire the weapon. Okay. The next thing they would do, they would put on a vent stall. Basically, it was kind of like a glove with all of the fingers gone except for the thumb. I just have here a little leather wrap to simulate that because these would get so hot that when you'd go to thumb the vent, you'd burn your hand third degree, right? So you're not gonna get burned. This is just a simulation. So he is going to call the command. I'll show you how it's done. Thumb the vent. Thumb the vent. Clear the obstruction. Vent on. I'm letting everybody know what I've just done. Try it again. Down the vent. Down the vent. Vent on. You're going to stay there the whole time until the position on this side, the vent primer, who is the person that fires the weapon, is going to spike the powder bag. At that point, you're going to say vent off. Just like a switch. On, off. Right? Vent on, vent off. Let me tell you, people ask me over and over again, what do I say? Okay? It might sound funny to you, but that's how it works. Okay. The next position would be the worm and wet swab. This again is a worm. This, like a giant Q-tip, will have a bucket of water down here and it will get soaking wet, I guarantee you. Now, the primary problem in these muzzle-loaded weapons is fire. If you have little burning embers in the barrel and you put gunpowder on top of them, bang. Especially with a big gun like that, they're going to call you stumpy because you're going to be missing your limbs. And it's happened. That's why they developed these safety procedures. Okay? 
So, air, keep it from getting inside the tube. They had somebody keeping their finger over this because when something was pushed in here, if let's say I filled this up with water in a real can and, and you pushed it, it would all come out in a little tiny water stream straight up in the air. Okay? You have your thumb over the top of that. When you're forcing this in, the air doesn't go to the little embers and get you, make them more, uh, fan the flames. Okay? So when this is done, you're putting out all those little embers. It's just extinguishing everything in the barrel. Okay? Now sometimes, let's say you might get some bad gunpowder and it would be wet. You didn't know it. You loaded it in there, you got the cannonball in, you fire the weapon, it doesn't fire, misfire. That's what the worm was for. They could put that in there, turn it around the cannonball, and pull it out. And then they could put it back in there and grab the powder bag if that was separated. They could pull the powder bag out. Or sometimes just to get the junk out of the barrel. So what we have here, we're going to have a little brown towel in here that's simulating an obstruction of the barrel. When he calls your position, worm and wet swab. Worm and wet swab. I'm letting him know what I'm doing. I step out here. You don't want to step in front. This is where the ball is going to be coming out. Anywhere close to here is good. You're going to reach in with the hook on the worm. Push down on this end. As you can feel it back there, it'll come out on the ground. At that point, you flip it, dip it in the bucket, put it out, and then you're back facing the enemy. Who's coming to kill you? <laughs> now, this position here, who is facing the enemy, <laughs> who is coming to kill them, they're going to try. Not if we're fast enough with this. He is going to call. Dry swab. Dry swab. I step out. Boom. Done. That's it. Two seconds. I lay my swab down and turn around because he's going to be calling. Uh, round, oh, excuse me, round forward. Round forward. So whoever is the powder monkey back here is going to be bringing a cannonball from out of the chest. Today we're using the Nerf ball because we don't want to blow holes in the wall. And you'll have a little balloon, water balloon tomorrow. This one's just air, okay? So I don't want to soak the wall. You're going to have that ready. He's going to call. Round forward. Round forward. I'm going to run this up. I'm going to give it to the dry swab. Who is going to take it? Okay. Remember, dry swabs, you're going to have to lean this down here because you need both hands. Then they're going to call. Load and ram. Load and ram. I put the gunpowder in first. I put the cannonball in. This ball is bigger than the tube, so you have to squish it down and pop it in. And then we ram it down. The gun is loaded. I'm letting them know that I just loaded the gun. Okay. Now they're going to call the next <laughs> position who is here. And let's see how good you guys are. Who can tell me what this is? Raise your hand. Go ahead. Lanyard. It's a lanyard. That's right. Hook, string, handle. You'll have that in your right hand. You'll have a bent spike. It even says bent spike on it. I've written it on there for you. In your left hand, you're standing behind the wheel. And they call? Frick and Prime. Frick and Prime. They take this, which is a, a nail, it was a pointed nail, and they run it down the vent, which is going to poke a hole in the gunpowder round that you put in to allow the fire to get to it. Then you hook the lanyard on the uh, percussion lock, and you let it fall. As soon as you hook it on, you let it fall, and now you tell everybody, gun ready to fire, or ready to fire. You're letting them know it's dangerous, OK? Then he's going to call. Stand clear. Stand clear. At that time, everybody else who's attention, they're going to take one step outside of the hub because every action has an equal and opposite yeah. reaction. These cannons could jump by some of the bigger ones. They could jump back five feet. And if you would have been anywhere right here, this thing would have hit you like a, a bus. Okay? Ours doesn't do that. But we're still following the protocol. So they say again. Stand clear. Stand clear. One step out, except for this person who's firing the weapon. They're going to reach down. They're going to grab the lanyard, step back at an angle like this. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Sorry, guys. And then they're going to call fire. Fire. You are going to gently, see, I'm not doing this. You have it taut. You gently pull it. 
Jesus. Hey.